exhibition excitement. Cougars shake off the cobwebs in a last minute victory against the Red Storm. And I'm Sean Gordon here outside the Spectrum in Logan getting ready for tonight's men's basketball tip-off between the Utah State Aggies and the BYU Cougars. Devils on campus. Cougar Heaven welcomes Duke to the Marriott Center for the first time ever. I'm Brittany Good. Lace up those sneakers, folks. It's time for the tube. <laughs> say that I'm excited for BYU's basketball season to be starting up, but after that game against Dixie State, I'm a little nervous. I'm I ready. I miss Jimmer. I miss Jimmer. And I Jackson. Everyone's missing Jimmer after that close um, win against a D2 team. Everyone wants to see Jimmer back. And I think the final score didn't reflect how close the game actually was, but the Cougar fans sweat some bullets there for a while when Dixie State rolled into town. Luckily for them, the men's hoopsters made it out of the Marriott Center alive. The Red Storm came out smoking hot, jumping out to an 8-0 lead. Brock Zilser finally put the Cougars on the board with this three, make it a 12-3 game. He'd go on to lead the Cougars with 23 points. BYU slowly clawed their way back thanks to this steal and throw down by Steven Rogers. Noah Hartsock added this nice little block before the half. Get that out of my house. 35-33 Cougs. Second half. Uh, El Capitan Brock Zilstra with another three. Nice, but Dixie State scored 12 straight points to take the lead again, 52 to 50. With 13.43 left in the game, the last seven minutes was a knockdown drag out battle and the teams exchanged leads 11 times. Brandon Davies gave the Cougs the lead with this two-handed jam with three minutes left. BYU finished the game on a 12, uh, on a 15 to seven run and never looked back. The Cougars walked out of the Marriott Center breathing easy with a 96 to 85 victory. Brandon Davies finally broke the silence talking to the media about the honor code violation that kept him off the bench for the latter part of a, an historic BYU season. The Provo native says he's happy to be back on the court and appreciates the love his teammates and fans showed him during one of the hardest times of his life and Davies isn't holding any grudges about the way he was treated. I was definitely treated more than fair just to be able to make it back here and, and be able to be a part of this team again is, is a blessing to me. It's definitely strengthened us. Uh, I think um, it's, it's a bad thing, a terrible thing that we all had to go through and uh, they were willing to go through it with me and, and, and pull through together. And I think that says a lot about the, their character. Tavis will play in his first official game since the Cougs took on San Diego State back in February tonight against Utah State at 7 p.m. The BYU men's basketball team took care of business in their two exhibition games, but tonight they'll head up north to take on a tougher foe. CoopTube reporter Sean Gordon is already in Logan. Sean, looks like a lot of tents. Are they all for the game tonight? They are. In fact, more than 500 students have braved the cold to camp out for tonight's game, and they're calling it Occupy the Spectrum. But if there's a time for the Cougars to take down the Aggies in Logan, this is the year. It'll be the first game that counts without two familiar faces, but the foe is very familiar. BYU basketball takes on the Utah State Aggies tonight, and both teams will face similar challenges as the season gets going. BYU will look to replace Jimmer and Jax, but many of last year's players seem primed to step up into key roles, and balance will be the key. In both of their preseason games this year, the Cougars have had four players with double-digit points, led by the frontcourt combo of Brandon Davies and Noah Hartsock. The Cougars have some fine-tuning to do, though, to walk away with a win tonight. BYU has struggled in preseason with turnovers, and while the offense has been prolific, BYU needs some work on the other side of the ball. Most of our concentration has been on the defensive end of the floor, just trying to, uh, from both those games, from Midwestern State and from Dixie, I think that defensively we had a lot of work to do. Utah State's biggest advantage may be its arena and the crowd that packs it, and BYU hasn't won in Logan since 2000. The Aggies are reloading this year, too. Point guard Brock Heath Payne and forward Brady Jardine are the only two returning players who saw significant time last year, and they'll be the key contributors. But they'll look to a pair of junior college transfers, a freshman, and a returned missionary to contribute early. 
So it's the beginning of a new era for both teams with BYU's prolific offense taking on Utah State's stingy defense. And it may just come down to which team finds a go-to guy first. Outside the spectrum on the Utah State campus, Sean Gordon, Cougtoop. Thanks, Sean. High school guard Corey Calvert from Colorado signed his national letter of intent for BYU. And remember Cougar great Jeff Chapman? His son Jordan will be making a trip from Washington to Provo to play for the Cougs as well. The BYU women's basketball team came rip-roaring and ready to go against Dixie State in their last exhibition game. First half full of three-pointers, Kim Parker goes for this one and she gets it. Cougars up 7-2. Haley Steed open for three and nails it. That's her first of three from beyond the arc. And for Vermont, another three. It rattles in and out and back into the net. Cougars up 45-21. Heading into the second, the Cougars continue to light up the scoreboard. Parker with a steal and Lexi Eaton takes this one all the way down the court. It'll go in for a layup. She finishes the night with 10 points for the Cougars. Ladies and gents, it's time for the Stephanie Vermont show. She goes up for a three again, gets it in on a quick release. Then Bailey, trying to work it inside, gets it to Vermont. She throws it up and into the basket. BYU makes this one look easy, finishing with a 91-54 to win. After easily winning both of their exhibition games, the women's basketball team is bringing in some serious competition tonight. We're talking ACC serious. Ever heard of Duke? The Marriott Center is where it's all going down tonight, and that's where we send Cook to reporter Brittany Good. Brittany, this is a big-time matchup. What can we expect tonight? The Blue Devils are ranked number eight in the nation. They have a solid coaching staff and lots of athleticism, but that's nothing the Cougars aren't ready for. The teams also matched up last year when the Cougars lost at Cameron Indoor Stadium by only 11 points. This year, the Cougars have something to prove playing on their home court. My team's excited. I, I mean, they know they can beat them. They know that we've played really good teams in their in their career and we, if we come out and play our game we can beat anybody on any given night and rolling on their home hardwoods will help too last year when we went there that was fun but there's just something different about having a top team come into your home court and you know I think that we obviously will have the home court advantage and hopefully we can get a lot of people in the stands but it's just fun to play at home and have that environment here so what's the game plan? Don't foul them. Don't let them drive the basket. Do a good job on rebounding. They're very physical. And then I think they run a little 3-2 zone. And last year we struggled with it. I think we have to attack that a lot better than we did. And I, I think we have a better feel for what they're going to do against us now than we did last year. I honestly feel like the key will be which team executes better. And they're a high-pressure team. They're really athletic. But if we can execute against their defense, I think that will be in good shape. Last year, the Cougars sent Duke to the free throw line 38 times. Coach Judkins says that in order to pull off a win tonight, they need to cut that number in half. Brooke, back to you. Thanks, Brittany. The game tips off tonight at 7 p.m. When Cougtube returns, football is back. The bye week's over. See how the Cougars plan to beat Idaho in the first of back-to-back -back home games. Pendleton pummeled. Senior linebacker Jordan Pendleton is injured again. We'll show you how his teammates react. Stay with us. The bye week has come and gone, and it's back to Cougar football. Tomorrow night's match up against the 2-7 and seven Idaho Vandals will be the, for their first meeting since 1955. Cougar reporter Blake Tillotson has this week's game for you. Blake, what can we expect from this opponent this week? Well, the Vandals are better than their record shows. In fact... In fact, of their seven losses, four have been decided by seven points or less. Or in other words, they're just four big plays away from a 6-3 and three winning season. The same as the Cougars. With only three games remaining in the regular season, the well-rested Cougars are preparing game by game. Idaho is just the next opponent, but to me, this the focus is much more on ourselves than anything else, and we can play better than we're currently playing. Glancing at tomorrow's game, Cougar fans might not realize there's a lot going on behind the scenes. For starters, even though BYU hasn't played Idaho in 56 years, quarterback Riley Nelson lost to the Vandals just five years ago at Utah State. Nelson, a freshman in 2006, made his collegiate debut in the fourth quarter. I remember completing a couple passes downfield, and I just think my eyes were closed. So I've uh, definitely got a lot more experience, a lot more maturity. You know, I'm four years older, and 
and they're a little bit you know smarter. So looking forward to playing again. They're a different team, different scheme, and uh, obviously I've got different guys around me, but it should be fun. But defensively, we're going to have to stop the run, and they've got a quarterback that I think uh, I've got a lot of respect for because he does throw the ball very well. Another thing fans should look for is a big showing from sophomore Cody Hoffman. The punt returner needs 186 more yards with the special teams to break the single season record. A performance like that would certainly help seal a win for the Cougars, tying the overall series at 2-2. Two and two. Under coach Bronco Mendenhall, BYU won six of their last seven games off a of bye week. And they've also outscored their opponents 141-21 to 21 in the last three years. Well, let's just try to, try to keep those turnovers down then, Let's Blake. hope so. Thanks. Big 12 who? Bronco bro broke some big news during this week's press conference. Coach Menenhall confirmed that rumors between BYU and the Big East Conference are you sitting down for this one. They're true. There, there are conversations that uh, are in place for the Big East to convince or to, to have BYU join that conference. Um, I trust our athletic director and, and um, President Samuelson to deal with all that. I've been involved, I've been informed along the way, and at some point there'll be a decision with what our intentions will be. I don't know how fast, nor do I think um, the time frame is relevant at this point. Bronco Olsen also mentioned inclusion would be a great benefit in being in the BCS short term, but the decision is ultimately up to his superiors. When Brian Correa isn't lighting up scoreboards, he's lighting up his report card. The BYU senior running back just scored a spot on a Capital One academic all-district team. Correa is a Chinese major and a business management minor with an impressive 3.9 GPA. This puts Correa right in line to earn academic All-American honors for the second year in a row. Everyone knows that injuries are a part of football, but come on, don't you think that Jordan Pendleton has had enough? He injured his knee again when the Cougars played TCU last week, and unfortunately, his season and BYU career are over. Cougar 2 reporter Christina Silly talked to some of his teammates about what it's been like to play with him on the team. Every position in football takes a toll on a player's body, and linebacker is no exception. BYU senior linebacker Jordan Pendleton underwent surgery on Wednesday to repair a knee that's taken a beating. It's kind of a uh, re-aggravation of a previous injury that uh, we found on an MRI. Pendleton's teammates appreciate the time they've had to play with the defensive standout. He was always in his spot. You could always count on him to be where he was. And he was a hard hitter, and, and he was a great pass rusher. So he got after the quarterback, which takes a ton of heat off, uh, off the secondary. Pendleton's BYU career has been plagued by injuries, but that doesn't stop him from supporting his team in any way he can. He's been injured in the past, and honestly, he's the first guy to pat you on the back when, when you come off the sideline. When the Cougars take on Idaho tomorrow night here at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, Pendleton won't be taking the field with his team, and his dominant presence on defense will be missed. He just brings that, his size, his toughness, to the game is just, you know, it's something you can't replace. He brought intensity and emotion, and uh, he's just a hard-nosed guy that came every single day to work, and uh, it's hard to replace a guy like that. At Lavelle Edwards Stadium, Christina Seely, CougTube. Cougar fans will definitely miss him, and even though he's done for the season, head football trainer Kevin Morris said he anticipates a full recovery for Pendleton and the opportunity to ch chase his NFL dreams. In honor of Veterans Day, BYU Athletics will host a special tribute to the Armed Forces tonight at 7 p.m. in the Smith Fieldhouse. Head football coach Bronco Menenhall, as well as all-pro tight end Chad Lewis, will participate in the program. Fans are invited to attend, or if you can't make it, you can watch it on BYU TV immediately following the women's basketball game. When Coug Tube returns... Dominating the Dons, the women's volleyball team cruised to a W over the Dons of San Francisco, but then ran into a brick wall in the form of St. Mary's. And stadium cleaners, it's a tough job in a big venue. Find out how they keep Lavelle Edwards Stadium clean after every home game. The Lady Spikers only needed four sets to pull away from the San Francisco Dons, which gave them a four-match winning streak heading into this week. 
The Dons caught the Cougs sleeping in the first set, but the blue and white quickly picked up and went on a 9-1 run. The Dons kept it close, but the first set belonged to BYU. Second set, the Cougs jumped right out to an 11-5 lead thanks to five kills from Nicole Warner. The Dons fought the Cougs point for point in the third set and ended up on top, 25-19. We're headed to the fourth set, ladies and gentlemen. 11 tied scores and a few errors later, the home team sealed the deal with a Jennifer Hampson kill. She finished the match with a high of 20 kills and the Cougs took the match three sets to one. Heather Hanneman had a career high of 55 assists and 12 kills. Their winning ways unfortunately ended there. The ladies headed to, up to St. Mary's and got run out of town last night losing three sets to zero. The women's soccer team finished their first season in the West Coast Conference with an 11-5-3 record, but the winning didn't end after their last game. A handful of our players were also given all-conference team honors. Junior Lindsay Lizenby made first team thanks to her tough defense, and junior Carly Payne's nine-season assists helped her make the second team. Honorable mentions went to junior Colette Jepson and sophomore Rachel Manning, and freshman Jaden Thornock was named to all-conference freshman team. Mackenzie Olsen takes her goalie skills off the field by keeping bad grades at bay. The senior keeper was honored with a spot in the 2011 WCC All-Academic Team. Olsen is studying clinical laboratory science and holds a 3.4 GPA. But don't worry, her academic success doesn't hinder her performance on the field. Olsen is now the all-time career saves leader for BYU and helped contribute to the team's 11-5-3 record. We have plenty of Cougar games to fill your plate before Thanksgiving. Next week is packed with games for BYU Sports Junkies, and they come just in time to start the holidays. Starting Monday night is the women's basketball game in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tuesday night's matchup promises to be exciting with our men's basketball team facing BYU Hawaii at home at 7 p.m. For those of you who can't make it, the game will air on BYU TV as well. Wednesday, the women's basketball team will face Kansas State all the way in Manhattan, Kansas that is. To wrap up the week, women's volleyball and men's basketball will take the floor. The volleyball team takes on Gonzaga and the basketball team takes on Longwood. Both games will air on BYU TV. When Coog Tube comes back, Stadium Spruce Up will find out what it takes to make Lavelle Edwards Stadium sparkle after every game. And it's not just our Cougar team kicking it off tomorrow. Mother Nature is kicking up a storm as well. I'll give you the details when 11 game time weather returns. You know how it's a drag to have friends over to watch a game and how big of a mess they can make? Well, imagine having a stadium full of friends making a big old mess. CougTube reporter Devin Dewey gets down and dirty to show us exactly how the home of the Cougars gets sparkling clean. A group of 60,000 people buying popcorn, drinks, and nachos can make quite a mess. Would you be up for the challenge of cleaning that up? To clean up the stadium after a game is no easy task. It takes an army of people to get the job done. The grounds used to do it, and um, they decided there were a bunch of clubs on campus, and they wanted some sort of a fundraiser. The clubs get their fundraiser, and BYU gets a clean stadium, so it's a win-win. But it takes quite an effort to get the Cougars' layers sparkling clean for the next home game. Uh, they all have push brooms, and they push everything toward the aisle. Uh, once they push it toward the aisle, they usually get some sort of uh, dustpan or something and they scoop up the trash and bag it that way. After they get most of the garbage out of the way, next comes the washing. Each side has three hoses for the workers to wash down every seat and aisle to make sure it doesn't have any sticky garbage left over. The entire process takes about 160 people and three hours of hard work. And when the dust has settled, these workers will have collected about 130 bags of garbage and about 40 bags of recycling for each game. At Lavelle Edwards Stadium, Devin Dewey, Cook Tube. Chantal, if it doesn't snow until Christmas break, I'll be fine. You know, I, I would, I feel the same way, but unfortunately, tomorrow it's going to be snowing, and I'm really sorry to be saying that. And taking a look outside right now, you wouldn't really be able to tell. This is an earlier shot, and but now we are seeing some clouds rolling through. The sun is still picking out, but today we will, we will be seeing some increasing clouds as that uh, cold front starts approaching. Tomorrow it's going to be rain changing into snow. For, for today right now, currently it is 39 degrees outside, humidity at 60% rising as that storm starts approaching. And we will be seeing a high of about 58 degrees today. And for tomorrow, our game day, well, 
like I said before, it will be raining in the morning, but by the time the game starts at 7.15, we will be seeing some snow showers. And now this snow, we're only gonna get a couple of inches, and it's not really gonna be sticking, so that'll be the good news. But the bad news is we will be seeing a wind speed up to 15 miles per hour. So if you guys are going to the game, make sure you guys bundle up because it is gonna be chilly. We will be seeing that wind chill there. And our set map, I know, it looks really scary right now. This is actually just the clouds moving in. This is a separate storm. The one we're worried about is actually right here. This one's gonna be moving in uh, through Idaho and Utah late tonight. And it'll be staying with us for the next couple of days. Now, Southern Utah, you guys aren't really gonna be affected by this. You'll mostly just be seeing an increase of clouds for the next couple of days. So today, high of 64 degrees, going into 60. Like I, and you might see an isolated rain shower here or there, but nothing really too, hard, too much to worry about. And going into the next work week, we will be seeing temperatures going up to 65 degrees. Now for your northern Utah, like I said, we will be seeing a couple inches of snow. Extreme northern Utah will be seeing several inches, especially in the mountains. 58 degrees today, increasing clouds, tonight rain. Saturday, 47, changing to snow. This is the day that we will be seeing the most snow accumulation. Sunday going to 46, and look at 29 degrees is that low. Monday and Tuesday though, that storm will be rolling out and we'll be seeing just some clouds. So guys, looks like if you're going to the game tomorrow, make sure you bundle up. Back to you. Thanks, Chantel. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, predictions. Last week, our Cougars had a bye week, so we picked South Carolina versus Arkansas and the game of the week, LSU versus Alabama. And Brianna made the mistake of picking Alabama, and something wasn't rolling for the Tide, so she took a loss on that one. On the bright side for Brianna, she was the only one to pick Arkansas, so she snagged a point for that. The reporters still hold the number one spot with a 14-4 record, but I'm right behind them at 13-5. Our Cougars are finally back at home this weekend to take on the take on Idaho at Lavelle Edwards Stadium and there's no question as to how we'll all, we all think this game will go. Everyone is picking the Cougs this week so they better not let us down. Last week we had the game of the century on the East Coast. Now let's move to the West Coast and we have number seven Oregon at number four Stanford. You wouldn't think a match between a duck and a tree is all that thrilling but hopefully it's more exciting than the field goal frenzy we saw in Tuscaloosa last weekend. I'm going with Oregon even though they're playing at Stanford I think the Ducks will come away with the W. So you guys will all be sorry this weekend or next week when we come back because Oregon will take that one. I love Idaho. I'm from Idaho. Got some love for my Vandals, but they're going to lose. BYU is going to totally take this one. No no doubt here. What is a Vandal anyway? Vandal? Yeah. It's a Vandal. Like a, a thief, a Vandal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, but an outlaw. <laughs> let's just say for Stanford, I think they have some luck on their side. I don't know about that. <laughs> That's Coop 2 for Friday, November 11th. If you want another look at the stories we did today or share it with your friends, check out the CookTube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us. Have a great afternoon. Go Cougars.